Welcome to the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast, where we remember a time when stacks of cards were held together with rubber bands and Mickey Mantles were put in bike spokes. We hope you will enjoy and reminisce as you come along with us as we tell stories about the baseball cards from the Golden Age of Baseball. We will examine the state of the vintage baseball card market and talk to some of the greatest collectors in the hobby. You won't be hearing us talk about any chrome or shiny cards here. Now, to take you on this retrospective journey, here's your host, direct from the shallow end of the gene pool, my son, Mike Moynihan. Yo and hello everybody, Mike Moynihan here and welcome to another episode of the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast. This is episode 13 tonight and tonight I'm going to do something that's going to be fun for me especially, hopefully you enjoy it as well and it's an opportunity to combine two things that I love about this hobby and that's vintage cards and autographs and there's a whole lot of ways that you can add those types of things to your collection. But I think one area of the hobby that gets overlooked a lot by mainstream collectors is the through the mail market. And we're going to use the term TTM to describe that during this entire show. So people, you know, TTMing has been around a really long time. And I'm not like the biggest expert on it. I've done it a couple of times and I'll probably tell some stories about that tonight. But I wanted to bring somebody on that is an expert on that and is in the words of uh one of our friends kind of a ttm legend and that's he's also happens to be one of my best friends and it's garrett who's card cutter what is going on you guys happy to be here mike what's up man nothing man. kind of uh geeked up to get this thing started well this is only our fourth or fifth time to talk today so i bet we'll be all right I know it's tough, like acting like we haven't talked. Right, man, I haven't seen you in so long. I haven't talked to you in forever since an hour ago or whatever. Man, you have been doing TTMs for a long time. I want you to tell your story here in just a second of about TTMs and just autographs, your hobby story. A lot of people have heard it that are at least that are watching this on YouTube, but you know you're experience and expertise the first question i want to ask you before you tell your story why is ttm autographing in the hobby largely ignored by 95 percent of the collectors out there um i guess my answer to that is i don't have an answer i know that's probably not what you want to hear um but i don't understand in a time where everyone wants to complain about on sticker autographs or you'll get something straight out of a pack of tops and it's smeared or smudged or anything like that why not pick a card you know let's just pick someone out of thin air goose gossage that played a long time go through their catalog of cards if you will through their career and i'm sure there's one two three five different images that you're going to love and get that sign i don't understand why as collectors we just always go to whatever comes out of the pack and it kind of blows my mind that it's so expensive you know what i mean you got a we'll stay on goose gossage you pull a goose gossage out of a pack and it's probably what do you think what do you say mike like a 40 dollar card on average 20 to 40 dollars, sure and then you know you get one on a ttm and you can buy them just about anywhere for for 10 bucks so i don't understand it um, and that's probably why I'm such a big TTMer. Yeah, I've I've kind of come around, and and you've been the influence that has gotten me to do this. <clears throat> and I want to talk about that story and kind of how I developed too. But let's hear your story first, because that's I think it's a great story. Why you love it so much? Your collecting background. Let me hear it. Um. So when I was like ten, eleven ish. Um, every year, you know, your parents would ask you, what do you want for Christmas? And you'd give them a list and so on and so forth. And I would always have Beckett magazine and Tough Stuff magazine subscriptions. And at the time, Tough Stuff was really my favorite because 
every month there was always one page that was a TTM page and it would always have in a little in the, in the corner it have like a little five by five area of addresses and that's kind of how I started at the time I was going to a lot of Houston Astros games um, at the Astrodome whenever I could go with my grandfather or father and I uh, just love love autographs and so the thought of somehow sending to these addresses and at the time I didn't even know how to write a letter you know my mom had to teach me all of that but I figured that this magazine is putting these people's addresses here for a reason and so I would you know find Phil Plantier in the you know he'd be on there and I'd flip through my cards you know at the time I had actually a pretty impressive collection as a 10 year old I had thousands of cards and I'd flip through them and oh man I have a Phil Plantier this one's going out and it just kind of went from there and uh, the longer you're in it you start learning more tips and tricks and uh, it's kind of evolved to what it is today for me so is Phil Plantier your first one no nope. And this is kind of a shame. I honestly have no clue who my first TTM is, but I do remember um, TTM and Phil Plantier and getting it back about a year later. It was a long time. Yeah, and people are maybe thinking, you know, man, that just sounds like a lot of work. You know, because your, your choice is write a letter, find a card, send a card, hope it comes back versus just going on eBay and you're, you might pay more, but it's kind of a done deal, right? I think maybe that's a resistance for some people. Um, I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, there's definitely some work behind it, but I kind of appreciate the grind also, you know, and as an adult now, it kind of makes it a joy to go to the mail and get something other than bills, <laughs> you know, um, so you don't know what's going to be in the mailbox that day and you're hoping it's going to be some TTMs. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I told, I just said a second ago that you're an inspiration to me to, to start doing it. And I've done uh, Ryan Sandberg. I did his entire player run of tops cards, plus a couple extras that I liked. I did, uh, I've done Juan Marichal and I, did uh, some cards to Brooks Robinson. Those are the three that I've done. And thankfully I'm a hundred percent, you know, send them out and get them back. What do you think your failure rate is in terms of sending out cards? What percent do you think you get back in any given year? Um, it depends on, on, on the year and it depends on the projects that I'm working on. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll do, go on a stretch where I call long shots is what I call them. And it's exactly that. Like I'm sending this off and it's a long shot that I'm going to get back. And when I do a long shot run, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sending to people um, like Mike Trout and I'm just going to start naming people like Mike Trout, Tom Brady, um, Jameis Winston, Nolan Arenado. You know, I'm just sending to like bigger name guys that just get, insane amounts of fan mail. And so when I do that, it's probably like 10%, you know, but if I didn't do those long shot projects through the years, I would have never um, received Ichiro back or Trout back or Tom Brady or JJ Watt game use cleats. Um, I would have never got any of those back if I didn't do the long shots, but you know, it's kind of ebb and flow. I like to do those for a while. And then you kind of get disappointed because you're not getting stuff in the mail every day or even every week sometimes. And then I'll do something, a project that I did for a while called, I called it Houston. We have a problem because I'm from Houston. So I just started sending to anyone that was in an Astros uniform and cards. Um, so those, man, I was getting them left and right, you know, so that was fun. But then it's not the, I'm not getting big name guys, but I'm getting quanti quantity over quality. Right. Who would you say, and again, this is just more getting into your background, then we'll get into some more fun stuff, talking, giving some people some ideas and everything, but who who are kind of your, some of your big gets, guys that people said, oh, you'll never get this guy or that guy. Who are some of the guys that you've been able to get that nobody else could? Um. Well, like I said, Tom Brady. I got him. I sent him two cards and 
he signed two cards. Now keep in mind, I sent to him through the years, probably 30 times. You know, that wasn't 30 times in one year, I'm not like a psychopath, <laughs> but through, through the years, probably 30 times. Um, Trout, I sent him one Allen and Ginter card because I thought to myself, there is no way this is ever coming back. And it came back. Um, I don't know. There's just been a bunch. Uh, I like to even do some guys like Bill Mazeroski, which y'all might be thinking, well, that's not very big name. And you're and you're right. He's not the hugest name. He is a Hall of Famer. But Bill Mazeroski has a reputation for like ripping up your cards and wow. mailing them back to you ripped in half. Um, and through probably the past three years, I've gotten him three separate times. And all three times he signed both of my cards and returned my donation. So I don't know. There's just kind of, uh, you just kind of learn tricks as you go, just like anything, anything you do, you get better with age or you learn more tricks and it's, it's TTMing is no exception. In fact, I would think it's as much of a learning curve to learn the tips and tricks of TTM as it is to invest in vintage or to, you know, I think any, any aspect of the hobby that you enjoy, there's a learning curve to, you know, get some experience and make some mistakes. You know, that's part of learning is making mistakes. Um, let's talk, let's get into some vintage cards and vintage players, because again, I'm telling you guys that, man, it is really fun to do it, to send off to a player and hope it comes back. And when it does come back, you're just like, oh my gosh. And you get an old tops card signed or a rookie card signed or whatever. And I know you're big into getting signed rookie cards. Do you agree that that's become a huge part of the hobby? It's become bigger, a bigger part of the hobby. Like it's become more popular. Well, before I answer that, do you remember years and years ago, it was like so taboo. That was like, you just didn't do it. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember you, my, my dad, I'd come back from an Astros game and have like a Craig Biggio autograph on a rookie. And he'd be like, what did you do? You ruined the uh, guard. Right. Um, but I would say most definitely. And, you know, I got on this kick of, of signed rookie cards about six years ago. And, you know, I, I just definitely don't think I'm a pioneer. Like I started that trend. There was people doing it way before me, um, but they weren't talking about it. And I remember telling you and some other friends like, man, this is going to be a big thing. This is going to be a big thing. People are going to start getting rookie cards signed. I just I just have a feeling. And sure as the day is long, it started happening. And not only did athletes start signing more and more rookie cards now at private signings, if you want a rookie card signed, it's more times than not, it's a different price than just an average card. You know, I'm wanting to say um, like like Joe Montana right now is on average $450 if you want them on a rookie card. And that's the same price as if you want them on a full size helmet. So it's definitely taken off. That's for sure. I have an example here. I want to show the people listening to this on the podcast. I'll, I'll describe it, but there's a player you and I were talking about maybe just yesterday or today. It's Rod Carew. Great vintage player, started his career, first tops card, 67, all the way through 86. So he's got plenty of cards to choose from. He's doing a private signing. It may be over by the time we air this broadcast, but uh, it's coming up. And he is, if I remember for cards, he's $70 a piece, right? Correct, yes. And he doesn't do TTM, correct? No, but not... Not in the 20 years that I've been doing it. I've never been able to get him, and I've never seen anyone get him. So, Okay, so he's a guy that you say, well, I liked Rod Carew, or I'd love to get a card signed by Rod Carew. You have to go the private signing route or at a show, right, the National or something like that. And so $70, and you might say, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of money, and it is. But I'll show you here. This is my Rod Carew. I have a Rod Carew rookie signed. It's uh, it happens to be slabbed by PSA DNA. The card's a five and the auto is a 10, so it's beautiful autograph on the rookie card. But if you said, okay, here, here's kind of what I want people to think about and kind of do the math in their head 
not that you're doing it necessarily for the money, but do you want to think about it as a good investment is you can do it just because you love it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you say, all right, $70 for the auto. And he's not different. When I saw the thing you sent me about the Carew private signing, there wasn't a difference. The prices are the same. Yeah, prices are the same. So you sent, you buy a rookie card. Let's say you can get it for a raw one in decent shape, 100 to $200, let's say. And then you spend $70 on the autograph and you're going to spend, you know, a certain amount on shipping and whatever coming to and from, right? To the private signing. First of all, you're guaranteed to get it back, right? That's that's a huge thing. So that's important. Or you'll get your money back, right? Either way. And another thing, you're not necessarily guaranteed this, but you have a highly likelihood of your autograph coming back perfect, which right. is a, which as a TTMer, that's far from a guarantee. <laughs> yeah, I sent when I sent Juan Marichal, just as a side note, I sent him a 70 tops. And the card came back, literally, it had been bent in half. You know, I'm like, I didn't send it that way. It came back that way. I'm not, you know, I think he was $10 on a TTM. So it wasn't like I had a lot of money. And it was a card I just had in my collection from yep. eons ago. So you get rid of all the risk factors. And you get to pick the color ink you want and inscriptions you want. And you're paying for a service. And you're going to get, hopefully, a really nice service out of it. Right. So let's say at most you this, you know, if you were to do this and then maybe you get it slabbed like this. So that's another 20 bucks, let's say. Now you're maybe $300 into the card at the most. Well, I bought this one at auction for 375. So my point is whatever you put in, you're you can certainly or most likely get out of it, right? At least get your money back if you have to get rid of the card someday or whatever, because the demand for these is only going up from what I can see, only going up. Right, and and, and a lot of these Hall of Famers and, and legends and icons of the sport, I mean, like you and I, they're not getting younger. Right. You know, and their rookie cards aren't, you know, they're getting older as well. So older and, and the hobby typically not always means more expensive. You know what I mean? So a lot of these Rod Carews and um, Nolan Ryan rookie cards, Steve Carlton rookie cards, you know, what were those 10 years ago versus what they are now? You know, hey, the you Ryan see, rookie is a great one to talk about because for Ryan, you have to send to his foundation as an example. Yeah. And he's 60 bucks at his foundation. Is that 75 maybe? I want to say 75. Okay. But you guess who else TTMs? Jerry Kuzman, right? Yep. So you could either get Ryan by himself, which would be great, and nothing wrong with that, or you could get both guys, which I always think is really cool if it's a multiplayer rookie card to get them both to sign it. And I know you have one of those in your collection, which is super awesome. And uh, I, I mean, you could easily get your money back out of that, whatever you had invested in that card. Do you agree? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, if you do the math on buying a Nolan Ryan rookie card roll and a good example, and then you send it off to uh, Mr. Ryan and his foundation, I think it's in Round Rock, Texas is where you send it off to, um, pay the $75. If you want an inscription, it's another 50. But I challenge you to find Nolan Ryan first at a signing period and much less to be able to get his autograph and an inscription for $125. Um, so he'll sign it. He is, he's so far his people and him have taken care of everyone's memorabilia that I've seen. They've gotten them back beautifully. They put a Nolan Ryan foundation hologram on the back of the card. You send it in, you slab it up. And then, I mean, shoot, I did mine over a year ago. And when I did the math on what they were selling for, then it was like a hundred dollar equity right then. Like, boom, I didn't even do anything. I just did the legwork and I made, I could have made a hundred bucks if I sold it. Now in 2020, I don't I have no clue what those things are going for right now. Probably not cheaper. <laughs> I would say that's probably a safe bet. So when you get these TTMs, you, again, you do a lot of it. What percentage do you think you send in for grading or, or authentication, I guess? From PSA. Uh, I mean, that's, that's another thing is like for me is, is 
up in the air. You know, if I'm doing like the Houston, we have a problem um, project that I did years ago. You know, I'm not going to send off a bunch of Jose Cruz and Larry Durkers and Cesar Cedeno's. What? Those are uh, legends. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> but if I'm doing um, a big football Hall of Fame rookie push or a big baseball Hall of Fame rookie push, um, where I try to send out five or ten of different Hall of Famers at the same time. When I get those back, odds are those are all going to go off to be slab. Yeah, and that makes sense because even though you may think it, you may, you know, well, I sent it off to this guy, I got it back. You got to worry about stuff like auto pens or, you know, um, secretarials and that kind of stuff. And you're, I know you're a pretty good, you can look at other examples and get a pretty good idea of if this was really signed. But once you send it off to PSA DNA and you get that slab back, that's that's a lot. That's just a stamp of confirmation that other people would want to see if you ever had to get rid of that item, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, you're definitely paying for their opinion, and their opinion is is the opinion that matters in the hobby, not not mine or yours. Right. And so that adds value beyond the cost of slabbing i think i mean i think it goes better than that because it's just a assurance to whoever's on the other end of that um i have another one here you're gonna love this one you know why you're gonna love it because it's from you uh this is oh, yeah. a this is a harold baines 1981 tops not quite in the vintage era that i like to talk about a lot but it's almost a 40 year old card and it's his 81 tops rookie signed that you sent TTM. Yeah, that was, that's my work right there. It, you did that. And then you sent it off to PSA DNA and it came back a nine on the autograph. We had it. I had it. I wanted to, I bought the card from you and then paid for you to send it off to PSA for me and get the autograph graded. And, uh, I love it, man. I absolutely love it. So that's the great thing about getting cards signed is there are some that look terrible, but in today's world, I think so many, they just look so gorgeous. I mean, look at this, this, I have them showing us 56 tops, Eddie Matthews that signed. I got this from another fellow YouTuber as well, Sean. And I just, that's, I mean, the cards, it just adds so much to the card to me. And then you have, a personal connection with that player through that card that is unique, I think. Yeah, it's it's definitely different feeling than going to your LCS or going to Target and opening up a pack of cards and you you pull an autograph. Um, you know, I don't know too many people that you know get a card of. I don't know why Ronald Acuna is coming to my mind, but Ronald Acuna and you pull that and yeah, that's going to be awesome. And that's going to probably make your hobby month, you know, but in 10 years from now, you're not going to be like, Oh man, I'll never forget the day I went to target. You know <laughs> what I mean? um, but I can tell you like, I'll never forget the day I went to the mail and there was an Ichiro autograph in there, you know? So it, it's definitely, a different type of collecting and a different passion than your typical collector in, in the hobby. Yeah. And you know, it's a, a lot of the players. I want to get into some players now because you do a ton of research and I don't want you to give away all your, your, uh, you know, inside information on a lot of this stuff, but I think it's important for people to know that, I think if they really looked into it, they'd be surprised at how many players they can do through the mail. And especially Hall of Famers, multiple sports. I mean, we're going to focus on baseball here, but it basketball and football and hockey. And I mean, you can get a lot of guys to sign on the baseball side. You know, I love my Hall of Famers. So I want to focus on that. And then maybe some stars and stuff like that. But thinking about that vintage era, you said it earlier, and I think it's such an important point. These guys aren't getting any younger. You know, uh, Phil Necro, I've seen some TTMs coming back from him lately, and they're pretty darn shaky. Yes, they are. Versus what they were six months or a year ago, right? And, you know, in, in the past two, 
in the past two years, he has stopped two different times due to health reasons. To so stop fighting, right? Bill Necro is not a guy that's going to probably be signing, if I had to guess, probably another six months tops. Right. You know, and he, he's currently signing at, with us shooting this podcast right now. He's currently signing right at this moment. But you just never know what life's going to bring you. So let's take Phil Necro. What does he cost per signature? Um, I'd say about 10 per. Okay. Um, so a lot of these guys don't have, you know, a set price. Um, but like, I'll give you a, a, a prime example of TTMers kind of being, can be a little dirty is like Jim Cott today, okay. um, put a, a deal on social media that said he's no longer signing TTM because people were abusing his generosity. Um, he said it, at, at first he started TTMing because people were sending donations and he was sending all this money to a charity that means something to him. And I, I forget the, the name of the charity slips my mind. Um, but he said, the more I kept signing, the more cards came in an envelope and the less the donation came to the point where it was just the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. So he said he stopped. Right. Um, but I would say typically... At, on the cheap end, um, a lot of guys can be had $20 for two cards. Um, I would say I wouldn't go less than that. There is some guys that will tell you straight up $5, you know, like Joe Carter, $5. Um, so that's kind of my loose rule of thumb is $20 for two. You know, I'm going to give a little public service announcement to all the collectors that are out there. Don't be cheap. I mean, you're asking for an, an autograph of a player that you would normally spend money on if you wanted to buy it at a show. Nobody, nobody's going to give it to you for free at a show or if you see it somewhere else on eBay. Why are you wanting them to give it to you for free? And especially if you know, I mean, it's almost always that they're not putting that money in their pocket, that player. They're giving it away to some charity that, mean, like you said, means something to them. How can that not be a good thing? And I hear stories all the time from you and on boards and everything that I read of people just the, the greed, like, oh man, I'm going to try to get, you know, five cards for the price of three and let's see if he sends them back or, and I think that is so, I'm just going to use the word cheap, you know, and if you don't want that. it, don't pay it. You know, if you're not willing to pay, don't. Do that. And I, this may sound a little, I'm not trying to sound harsh. I'm trying to, you know, give a little dose of reality, I guess, a little bit to people that, hey, just pay the, pr if you don't want to pay the price, don't do it. But so many people want something for nothing these days. And I don't blame the athletes like Jim Cott for saying, you know what? Enough's enough. And I don't, people probably, there are people out there that would go, man, he's a jerk. He stopped signing a TTM. No, he's not. He doesn't have to sign your item. He has he's under zero obligation to do that. He was doing it to, you know, help his fans or whatever. <clears throat> and people <clears throat> because it's growing so much, right? The the TTM world is growing that that abuse and, is happening more. I mean, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about this now or or maybe later in the show um because I see you're kind of going down a track of particular players, but 2020 and COVID has changed the game in my opinion of TTMing. Great. Let's uh, talk about that. That's a great idea. So there's a lot of guys that were TTMing and, and of course now that I'm on the spot I can't give you an example that were signing all the time and they have since stopped their mail. Stopped signing. Uh, Jerry West was one of them. Um, the basketball uh, Hall of Famer. He was signing his fan mail fairly frequent and he's stopped because of COVID. Uh, but not only that, since a lot of collectors and in-person autograph chasers or IPers, um, they can't go to the ballpark and get autographs. Well, they, like us, are junkies of, of, of autographs or, auto, or junkies of baseball cards. You know, they have to get those autographs somehow. So now there is, in my opinion, there's more TTMers now than ever. Um, it is just absolutely insane. And I think that's why people like Mr. Cott are just getting flooded 
Um, Harold Baines is another guy that was signing very, very well for about a year, and he stopped. Because, and, it, and, it's, and it's always the same thing. He stopped because people, like you said in your terms, got cheap. They started wanting a whole lot of something for a whole lot of nothing. And so he stopped. You don't you don't blame the players, do you, for making that decision? How how could you? You know, let's let's change the terms. Let's say you mowed grass for a living, right? And you were twenty dollars a yard. And then the guy that you've been cutting for a year just said, Hey, I just bought fifty seven acres over here. I need you to cut it for twenty bucks. You know, you're gonna tell him to get lost. Well, that's kind of what's happening. These guys have been signing stuff and, and getting in this money and now Johnny, he's going to send you the same $20 he's been sending, but now he's going to have five cards or six cards, or maybe before he only had one. So, I mean, yeah, it kind of ruins it for everybody. Yeah, that's my point. I, that's where I was exactly going to go with it. It's taking advantage of the system, and that screws everyone else that's following the system. What do they you say? You don't, you don't chop the head off your golden goose? <laughs> that's that's kind of what's happening where you're chopping the heads off off these athletes that are signing for us TTMers and we took advantage of them and then they stopped. And then right. like a lot of people, then we want to complain. Like, like we had nothing to, we as a community had nothing to do with it. And it's a hundred percent us. Right. Um, another guy that stopped for a while, you see these guys, you mentioned stopping and starting Brooks Robinson's a guy that had yep. stopped for a while. Right. Wade Boggs also. Yeah. And they've started signing again. Sure have. Yeah, I got a couple of uh, Robinson cards. And I sent him, <clears throat> I want to say it was $10 per. Does that sound right? Yeah. I, I got all the information from you. so That sounds uh, about right. From and, and yeah. And to me, that's insanely fair. Like, that's very reasonable. And I'd have a harder, honestly, I'm just going to kind of put it out there. Someone was offered asking fifty dollars a card, and again, the TTM game is unknown. You don't. If it was a private signing, absolutely, you know, because you know there's some. Again, I, the guarantee word's a difficult word to use, but you're. Uh, it's coming back to you, versus, especially if it's a high dollar card, a rookie card, or whatever, to throw that in the mail just and hope and pray that it comes back to you. Yeah. At that, you know, at a certain price level, it becomes too risky, I guess is what I'm saying, right? Right. But that sometimes also kind of makes it a little fun. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the gambler type. I know you got that gambler mentality, and that's part of it too. And there's certainly a draw to that excitement, anticipation. Man, let's see. This would be an awesome get, you know. Uh, Let's, let's continue to talk about some more living Hall of Famers. Uh, okay. Like Let I was me, curious, Raleigh Fingers, does he sign through the mail? He does. Um, and, and please, for your audience, don't don't crucify me if my information's wrong. I don't have a the computer up in front of me and I'm looking at all this, but I believe Raleigh Fingers um, is a strict $15 per signature, I believe. And again, that doesn't seem like unreasonable. That's not crazy, right? Um, especially if you're the kind of person that only wants one or two of their cards. That's, you know, hey, I just like to get a Raleigh Fingers autograph. Great. Um, but what's funny is like Raleigh Fingers, as an example, in the market, his stuff can be had. You can get an on-card tops autograph of Raleigh Fingers for $15. So yeah. as a collector, you kind of have to decide, do I want my own card signed or do I want just to buy a, a modern card of a hall of famer that they signed for tops or Panini or whoever. Right. So there you got to weigh that. No question. Um, dang it. I had one of those great questions that I was going to ask you and I, forgot, I didn't write it down. I told you I was going to write it down and I didn't, uh, it'll come up again. I'm sure. You want to run through some more players, maybe? Yeah, I'll, let me just run through some Hall of Fame pitchers. I kind of have them broken down here. Um, so Jim Palmer, Juan Marshall, uh, Goose Gossage, Burt Blylevin, Nolan Ryan, Steve Carlton, Phil Necro, and Raleigh Fingers are all living 
Hall of Fame pitchers that can be had via TTM. Um, some larger donations than others. Some are faster than others. Um, but you know, if you if you gave it that old good good old college try, um, you could all these guys could be had through the mail. For people out there that have never done this, what's kind of an expectation, just real quick on time frame? You'd mentioned some take longer than others. Is it a? Am I waiting a week? Am I waiting two weeks? Am I waiting six months? Oh man, I all would say. Above. <laughs> I mean that it's truly all the above because you don't know what the athlete has going on in their life. You don't know, you know, if it's someone like, um, we'll say Dennis Eckersley, you know, and he's working for an organization, a, a professional baseball team. Well, during the season, he's probably not going to have a whole lot of time on his hands. Um, I can give a, a key example, like in football, Kevin Green, you know, during the football season, he's a coach in the NFL. He doesn't have time to sign his, his fan mail that's in Florida. You know, so you might send it off, you know, in August during training camp. Well, you're not going to get that that sucker back for quite a while. So you just kind of I look at it like you're fishing. You know, you throw that line out in the water and you might get a bite. You might see that bobber going up and down right away. Then again, it might be a long day. Okay, it might be a while till till you get a bite. That's fair. And. Again, it's just trying to set some expectations for people that they can kind of get a good idea if they want. Again, you got to do your own homework. There's no question that this isn't just, you know, I see it a lot where, again, guys in the community just want somebody to give them all this information. They then they don't want to do the work themselves to find out how it all works and do the homework that you spent years literally honing and learning. Right. I mean, I would say, I would say, don't expect it any sooner than two weeks. You know, it takes snail mail, you know, with just a stamp on it, you know, four or five days to get there, four or five days to get back. You know, then you got a couple Sundays in there where the mail doesn't really run. And then how many days did it sit on the, on the, the athlete's counter, you know, or the celebrity's counter if you're into celebrity autographs. <laughs> A quick tip while I'm thinking about it is one thing I do when I mail them out again, I'm not done a few, but I always use a non-machinable stamp for, especially for the return envelope. Maybe I send it in a padded mailer, but if I send it in a larger envelope with the return envelope being smaller, I always use non-machinable stamps because you don't want your cards going through the post office rollers if you can avoid it. And that for, what is it? 15 cents extra or whatever it costs is well worth it to know that that car, or at least hope that that card doesn't go through the normal procedure of going through rollers. And that way um, it's hand handled by someone and that'll keep your cards in better shape. I think. Do you do yeah, that or no? Definitely a good tip. I don't do that. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't, I do know a lot of collectors that do do that with photos um, I have some friends that collect four by sevens or um, excuse me, four by sixes and five by sevens that they do that. But that's just because photos are a little bit more delicate than, you know, a baseball card. Yeah. And I always, so, do you send them in top loaders or do you send them in like card savers? Yeah, I do the uh, semi rigid holders or card savers. Yeah. Um, that's what I do. Um, I used to do top loaders, but the edges on top loaders are so thick. And yeah. when they go through the um, post, um, the you, ugh, I can't talk, the post office rollers that you were just speaking of, um, a lot of times it'll break those. And then when it breaks, you know, your card's in there and, you know, who knows what happens next. Right. Yeah, I've used semi, I've used car, uh, card savers when I send them. Plus, it's easier just to get the cards in and out for the player, you know. No doubt. No doubt. Less um, let me rattle off some some Hall of Fame hitters or fielders, if you will, and, and let me know if any of these you want to talk about here. So Wade Boggs, Paul Molitor, Brooks Robinson, Andre Dawson, Tony Perez, Johnny Bench, Carlton Fisk, Jim Rice, Bill Mazeroski, and Robin, Robin Yount. So all of these. Orlando, Orlando all, Cepeda? Did you say Cepeda? No, Is, I didn't. Uh, he hadn't signed in a, in a little while. Okay. And he's um, getting all these are guys that can be had right now. Also, um, I will say some are tougher than others. 
you know, you heard me earlier in this podcast talking about Bill Mazeroski and Robin Yount isn't exactly easy. Um, but with a little bit of hard work and dedication, you too can get Robin Yount. <laughs> you know, uh, a guy like Paul Molitor, I think is intriguing because, you know, he's involved in baseball still. Is, um, I can't remember. Is he managing the twins right now? I, I think remember. he got fired. I think he did too. But he's unemployed, and that's why he's signing this fan mail right now. Gotcha. What is Paul <laughs> Molitor per auto? Just out of um, well, he was um, ten per, but he recently put out a, a like little message in TTM return envelopes that he's now a strict fifteen per. Which, I mean, I still think that's a good deal. So, what? I think it's important also for people to hear maybe you're rattling off all this stuff, this, all these players that, you know, are signing where, where do you get that information? If somebody wanted to go out there and go, what resources are these people using to find out this stuff? What are some different places they can go and, and learn? So I use three things and that's all I use is these three things is startiger.com, which is $5 a month. It's four ninety nine. Easy, easy, easy. You know, you'll type in the athlete or celebrity's name. It'll tell you um, any addresses that are in there, their last return, how long it took, so long and so forth. And that's kind of a website built or built by built. The information is built by us collectors. So built by collectors for collectors. Right. So. If I send off to Bill Mazeroski, I'll input, boom, send off to Bill Mazeroski on this date. And then it comes back, you know, I'll go in there, got it back on this date. And then I might make a little small note, um, signed it in blue ink, looks very nice. You know, so I, I use them quite a bit. Another thing that I use is sportsaddresslist.com. Okay, sportsaddresslist.com. And you're going to go there. And there's no addresses on that website. Okay. On that website, only thing they do is sell books. And these are, these are books that are nothing but addresses. So like the baseball book is $45. And for that $45, you're going to get a book that is, I don't know, about three fourths of an inch thick. Um, I looked at it before um, we got on here and it has almost 9,000 addresses of wow. living players. Um, and then, um, for a year, the, the gentleman that owns this website for a year, he will send you email updates. I believe it's quarterly of, um, players that have passed away, um, any updates to addresses, so on and so forth. So I think that's really good. Um, but kind of the stinky thing with that is if you want hockey, well, that's 40 bucks. If you want basketball, that's, you know, 35 bucks. So Football and baseball are the most expensive because typically there's the most players. Right. You know? So those are both $45, but I'll just say I've gotten some really, really, really big names using those. So I'm not going to give names, but I've used, I've gotten back some really big returns using um, the address, excuse me, the sports address list.com. Those books. Nice. Um, all right, time to not give away the whole, you know, the whole house here, but maybe if someone's getting started, what are some things you would tell somebody, Hey, make sure you do these few things to give yourself a better chance of being, um, I would say you're less likely to get back a lot of these current guys that are playing. And why is that? Because they're fresh on our minds because we watch them every night play, um, play baseball. We, we play them on um, the show 2021, you know, we're playing them on PlayStation. We're on our fantasy leagues. They're at the front of our minds. So they're at the front of our minds. So people are sending to them and let's not to mention they're, they're professional athletes at this current time. So they're busy. Um, so I would say to give yourself kind of an upper hand, let's focus on the guys that no longer play. Um, 
they have a little bit more time on their hands. You know, a lot of them like to give back to their fans because they couldn't do it as much as they wanted to. And then there's a whole ton of big, big name guys that aren't Hall of Famers that you can get, you know, right now, like the Will Clarks and Jose Canseco, Lou Whitaker, Fred Lynn, you know, Brett Saberhagen. There's a ton of them. Um, so that's what I would say. Focus on the guys that no longer play. Um, write a, a handwritten letter if, if you want. It just comes across as more sincere. Um, being full transparent, I don't. My handwriting is terrible. I don't exactly spell the best either. Um, so I type out my letters, but my letters come across as very genuine. Um, at the very end, I always leave my phone number and my email. It just kind of makes you kind of like an open book. You have nothing to hide. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails back um, from athletes through the years. I've actually gotten some phone calls from athletes through the years to thank thank me for um, writing them and so on and so forth. And then, uh, like Mike said, and we've kind of beat this, and I'm just going to say it real quick, don't be cheap. You know, if they – Want a donation? Give them a donation. You know what I mean? If if someone is $20 for two and you don't have $20, maybe you don't send to them right now. Maybe you send to them next week, you know, when you have $20. So that's, I guess, kind of what I got. I like it. You know, again, <clears throat> it's a growing area of our hobby. I think a lot, and I think 2020 has a lot to do with that. Not only do people have more time on their hands, they're wanting to you know, they, they can just do more things than they might've been able to do before. And, you know, the athletes are either getting inundated and quitting or not signing because of, uh, you know, they just don't want to touch a bunch of items that are coming to them from all over the United States or whatever. I, I could see it both right. ways. So you're getting a lowering of players that are going to sign fewer players that are signing and a higher demand for, for autographs. It's it's just going to get I think tougher, but I don't want to sound discouraging. I want to encourage you. I'm so glad that I started dabbling in it. I've got a few players that I'm eyeballing because I love to get an entire. I'm doing player runs, and I know you do. Thank you, Garrett, for inspiring me to do that too. But uh, it can be a really fun part of this hobby if again you're willing to put in a little bit of work and you know, provide a donation and do the, do what's right by that player. And it's, uh, it, it combines kind of to me, everything that we love about this hobby, vintage cards, let's say, especially the older hall of famers or stars that you want to get on old cards. Again, they're not getting any younger. When's the best time to get them when you, when you have an opportunity to now. And so taking advantage of that, I think is critical. And it combines those beautiful cards, those vintage cards, and getting the player to, you know, have a tactile connection with that card and right. for you. That's uh, you said you said, you know, it's it's a little harder now in, in 2020. And the first thing that popped in my head is we're talking just strictly hobby here. What what has gotten easier in 2020 in the hobby? Well, nothing. Right. You know what I mean? You can't go to Walmart or Target or Myers or anything like that and, and pick up a blaster anymore. You know, the uh, hobby boxes have gone through the roof. Singles have gone through the roof. So, I mean, TTM, just that community just kind of followed along with that. You know, yeah, it's a little tougher, but everything in 2020 has gotten just a little bit tougher. But guess what? As as a whole, as a hobby, no one has stopped. We've all just kind of changed how we collect a little bit. Well, Garrett, man, thank you so much for, you know, sharing your knowledge and your expertise in this area. I, I, I encourage people to look into it and maybe you learned something today. I hope so. Um, thanks for being here, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Mike. You betcha. Um, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, go check out everybody at the Bench Clear Media Network. we got a lot of great people on YouTube. we got podcasts. So thanks, everybody, for the support and continuing to tune in. We'll have another episode for you next week. And based on when this episode is going to air, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Anything else you want to say, Garrett, before we go? No, 
I'm, if it's Thanksgiving, I'm ready to eat, man. Ain't that the truth? All right, guys. Y'all have a great one. Have a great week and keep collecting.